Here's the plan. I have never done one of these official reading vlogs where I go through a book and you guys experience my reading. I decided to give it a try, so we'll see how all of this video comes together. If you're seeing this, that means I actually went through with it. If you're not, then I guess I'm just talking to myself right now. I am doing a reread of Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Well, there, there's a collaboration going on and I wanted to read books that take place in the state in which I live. I read Fangirl when it originally came out in about, or, or was it when it originally came out? I think it was around 2013 that I read it for the first time, which at this point is seven years ago. At the time, I did note that yes, Kath and her sister Ren were both from Omaha, Nebraska which I grew up there for 13 years of my life. 14 years of my life. I can count time. No, 13 years. I think it was 13. Somewhere in between there, it doesn't matter. I didn't fully connect the fact that later in the book, when they're actually going to school, they are in Lincoln, Nebraska. They're going to UNL, which is currently the town in which I live in. And now with the fact that I have officially lived here for about 10 years and have experienced Lincoln life, it's really bizarre seeing all of these places and all of these references that I now know where they're located. So going back and reading this, I'm about 20% of the way through. It's really odd and bizarre seeing all of those being mentioned here and, and being able to place them on a map and actually knowing what the inside of these places look like and the outside of these places look like. And I'm really liking that experience, especially when I am driving through Lincoln and I'm seeing this and I'm still part way through the book and dog look at look at that monster <laughs> anyways he's just gonna take over this vlog and starting it over again getting Kath's perspective on everything that's going on as she's starting college I remember going through this the first time and relating to it on a level that I, I don't even know if I want to explain to you guys because I have a lot of those social disorders and there were times in college where I just held myself up in the room and maybe decided to skip meals because I was paranoid about how the social structure of the cafeteria worked and things like that. Class, I would always go to class because I knew what the social etiquette was there. I knew what the dorm was. You would just find a seat, you would sit, you would listen to the professor, and that's what you had to do. You learned. But when you had things like the cafeteria and even just going to the shared bathroom sometimes was just something that I had to fully process and think through. So I understand a lot of the things that go on in Kath's mind. But coming back to it the second time around, having aged a little bit from when I first read it, Kath is very judgmental and she's very quick to put people in places in corners. And I don't really like that about her at all. And I can see a little bit of myself in that sometimes and maybe that's why I'm like, ah, I need to pull back from that. And I'm hoping as I've gotten older, I've come back from that. But just sometimes, especially when she's comparing and contrasting Omaha to Lincoln. And I feel like since I've lived in both places, I mean, I get where she's coming from for a lot of that comparison. But at the same time, she's limiting herself to this on-campus life and I it's not fair to judge all of Lincoln by that. Lincoln is very much a small town. And at first glance, if all you do is you live on campus and you only go to certain classes and you don't expand your horizon, yes, we don't feel like we're very diverse. But Lincoln is also a epicenter of refugees. So if you expand out from that, you have a lot of refugee groups that live in Lincoln, which is why I love the food scene here. And I am so glad that at this point, we're very much becoming more food truck friendly. So that is a thing I'm excited about. But then there's, then there's the fact that she can't see past herself in a lot of instances. And maybe it's because I, I know where this book is going. And so I know what a lot of the other characters are dealing with and all the things that are soon to be hitting Kath's plate. The fact that she she's still in this reality of everything is centered around her views and who she is and what she does and, and that kind of thing. And things are about to hit the fan and it's going to drastically shift things, which she definitely needs at this point in the book. I also 
I grew up on fan fiction. I grew up writing fan fiction. So I relate to that. And I think that's this, that's why this book hit the booktube community so hard when it did, because Kath is a lot of us. It, she, she represents how most of us view the world, not necessarily in the details, but the fact that we were avid readers and we had this fandom and we liked to write fan fiction and just explore those realms and be in our head like that, which, like I said, I think is why it hit so well. And so there are parts of this book that I am I'm really enjoying again and, and seeing all of that, but now getting a new perspective, having lived in the town in which this book is now taking place in, there are times where her, her view kind of irks me a little bit, and maybe I'm just getting defensive, but yes, there are there are things that I do agree on, and if you if you don't come out of your bubble, you're not gonna get the big picture, which I think is, is the biggest thing that this book is even going to be teaching at some point is you gotta look outside your circle. So I am up to chapter 12 now in Fangirl. We have reached the point where we're starting to see some of Ren's spiral downward and how Kath doesn't know how to relate. She is more dealing with her own internal struggles that she's not seeing some of the bigger picture of what is going on. It's it's a little bit of being mad that Ren's leaving her behind, a little bit of I don't understand why everybody else doesn't hold my worldviews kind of deals, especially since we have just gotten to the point where the professor has given her back her paper and accused her of plagiarism, which I can very much see. There, There's this weird realm of fan fiction where it is a form of plagiarism, but it's an approved form of plagiarism, almost. Kind of, sort of. But at the same time, you have retellings that exist which are almost like a form of fan fiction. But do we okay those? I, I mean, I, I understand. She, she, let, let me let me back up and, and try, try and place all the words that I actually want to come out of my mouth in the correct order. I can understand the connection that Kath has with Simon and Baz. She has been writing them for years, so she knows them best. It's the easiest way for her to get writing across. But the whole point of this class is to learn to write better and to learn to write more and maybe find your own voice. So I can see why the professor was on her case about the fact that this assignment was not supposed to be a form of fan fiction. And I think Kath can't take that form of constructive criticism that well. She's gotten used to all of the high praises she's received for her work and then all of her online high praises for that work and so why shouldn't the two combine? But the real world doesn't necessarily work that way and if she ever does want to go into actual writing she's gonna have to leave Simon Snow behind because it's not hers. Yes she's borrowing but that doesn't make it hers. I don't know. But I do like seeing Levi coming out a little bit more. Levi is a fun character. I know a few Levi's. It will be interesting seeing how the rest of this falls out and where all of my nostalgia sits for all of this. And then I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll just give you a dog. <laughs> This is a reading vlog, but this book keeps talking about corned beef hash from the Highway Diner, which I've never been there, but it's one of those ones that is on my list. I just haven't gotten around to getting there yet. There's too many food places. They keep talking about the corned beef hash, and now I'm craving corned beef hash. So I'm gonna make some corned beef hash.
So I'm about halfway through Fangirl. Not quite halfway, almost a halfway. Kath and Levi have had their first kiss. We had the whole outsider reading event. And then, of course, the roommate showdown. I can't really call it a showdown because it's not like she actually really cared. I mean, there was a little bit of hurt there, but they weren't dating. That's what she's claiming at this point. It's at that stage where Kath is still dealing with a lot of personal things. She's not really seeing anybody else's perspective. We've had the whole Thanksgiving thing, which I, I, I want to like Ren. I, I, I'm a little bit more on Kath's side, especially since it's from her perspective. So I can feel that hurt there, especially when you've been sisters forever and probably that twin thing makes that bond a little bit more and then they're not talking anymore and that hurts. There's a lot of things that I know are coming and it's going to be painful all the way around which is one of the good things about this series. I don't know. I don't know. It, it, I, I don't really have much more of an update. I, I've read some things I've made. I did make the corned beef hash because they kept on talking about it. And I needed to eat it. At this point, you've probably seen, so I don't know why I'm talking about it. It was good. I liked it. It was kind of like the poor man's version because it was not like corn beef. It was corn beef lunch meat, <laughs> which it works. It's fine. It's okay. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I have any more updates as of right now. I'm sure as all of the stuff starts hitting the fan, you're going to get more updates. I just realized that I haven't updated you on where I'm at in fangirl recently. I am nearly done. We've reached the part in which Ren has had her hospitalization and people are starting to realize that maybe we need to switch up how things are doing and Ren is realizing how much she doesn't know is going on in Cass' life. So I, as all of that mess is happening in the book, mess is happening out here as well because part of the reason I haven't updated you is mainly because life has just been really really weird recently especially with everything that is going on in the world and now at this point I may or may not be working from home next week work is starting to implement some precautions especially since there are some known cases for the thing that shall not be named in our state everything has been canceled I just, ah, mm, mm, mm. I, I just, a lot of things are going on right now. So like I said, maybe working from home next week. I will probably have the book done in the next couple of days. I am enjoying the ride of going back and experiencing this whole story and reliving the glory days of when fan fiction totally took over my life. Part of me wants to go back and read some, and I may have gone back and, and read some Buffy fan fiction recently just because the nostalgia just drove me to do it. I don't think that's a bad thing. It's reading. I enjoy it. It's fine. So stay tuned for updates on my life and this book. There's also the possibility of, I don't know where the state of the construction on the library downstairs is going to be at this point. If that's still going to go through, when we think it's going to go through, everything is up in the air. It's crazy. I don't know. I just, uh, yeah. So final thoughts on Fangirl. I finished this last night. I ended up just binging through it because I was at a point where Kath was starting to come to a lot of realizations. Ren was starting to become more of her sister again. I couldn't sit and let the rest of it go. I just had to go through all of it. Halfway through, I was unsure of whether or not I was going to keep the original rating of this book. I gave it a five star. It's been one of my favorite books since I first picked it up. And then after I finished it and I let it sit overnight and I kept on thinking about it, I'm leaving it at where I originally had it. It is still a book I very much relate to. I think just because Kath reminds me so much of myself. I see so much of my life experiences in her experiences. I understand her social anxiety. I was that way in college. I had that same connection with fan fiction that was my world for the longest time. And so all of those elements, I could very much see myself as Kath, doing all of the things that Kath does, even the things that I vastly dislike about her, I could relate to on so many different levels because I see some of those blinders in my own life because sometimes you forget that people come from a different perspective, that not everybody interacts and views the world 
as yourself and that's something you very much learn as you get older and as you go through all of these light experiences and I also like the way that this ends it's it's almost open-ended yes it's the end of the year she turned in her project you don't ever really get to see if that ended in a good way you don't know if her story was fully accepted you got the closure with Nick where Kath just lets go of that story but at the same time Nick doesn't get that story which is kind of poetic justice in a way and I can see all of the flaws in this book but at the same time because I see all of the mirrors of my own life in it I, I can't let this book go this is always going to be a book on my shelf and it's probably going to be something that hey if you want to understand what goes on in my mind sometime pick up this book <laughs> this is this is me now I have never read carry on nor do I have any desire to read Carry On. That was never the connection I had with this book. It was just the thought processes behind fan fiction and writing fan fiction and the connection with that fandom. That's what I liked. So I think I want to leave this experience as it is. I don't want to add to it. I don't want to muddy it with Carry On. And I know there's always been all of these mixed reviews over that book anyways. So I'm just going to leave that there. And I think... I think, I think that is the end of my first official single book reading vlog. And it has been an experience. There's been a lot of things going on as I've been reading this book. There's been a lot of world events and things that have just changed life a little bit. And I think I want to do a few more of these. I'm probably going to pick and choose which books I do it with. Probably going to do it with a lot of my rereads so I can get some of those perspectives on how my viewpoints changed and plus they're usually books that I've already mentioned at some point in my channel and I don't necessarily want to do a full review over them but I think my thoughts being known is kind of fun. So they're going to be books that I want to talk about but I don't want to do an official review over and I think that's going to be a nice medium. Tell me down below your thoughts on the differences between a book review and a book reaction, these kind of vlogs. Also, your thoughts on Fangirl. I would love to hear what you guys think of this story and if you've connected with it or not, all of your thoughts around fan fiction. There's just so much, so much in this book. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And of course, if you want to keep up to date with every time I upload a video, subscribe down below and I heard your beautiful faces. Bye.